Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be replacing an electronic door actuator for this beautiful Lexus GX460. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Street Rod Jim. And if you came here for the Lexus GX460, I wanted to let you know that there's also a playlist since this is my personal vehicle as time goes on, I'll update my playlist with different things. And so far, if you want to add a trailer hitch, uh, I did some ceramic coating and a super clean to this vehicle. That's in the, uh, that's in the playlist right now. Uh, and also on the channel, I have a restoration of a 2003 anniversary Corvette. I also have an amazing factory 533 hot rod kit car that I'm still working on that there's literally hundreds of videos about. So, uh, you know, definitely stay in the channel and check out some other things if you like. So let's talk about the Lexus actuator. Sometimes these doors unlock and lock depending on certain programs. And sometimes when you open up the driver's side door, it automatically unlocks all four doors. And sometimes when you hit the unlock button, it opens up all four doors also. Now, if you notice that one or more doors are slowly starting to fail, like 50% of the time it locks and sometimes it doesn't lock and things like that. Or sometimes you hit the unlock button and you'll hear chunk chunk. You hear two sets of movement instead of one movement. That's a sign that one of your actuators is actually failing. Once you figure out which one it is, it's time to replace it. Now in the GX460, like I have here, that could be a seven to $800 repair for just one door. And so if you could get a part, uh, you could actually save yourself three, four hundred dollars in installation by actually doing it yourself. And that's what we're going to do today. All right, so what you see here is the actual door actuator for the rear passenger side of the Lexus GX460. Mine's a 2014. And you have two actual cables coming out that control the actuator. Um, this is not part of the electronic side. This is just the manual side of it. One actually opens up the door, and one actually uh, locks and unlocks the door. So what we have here is the electronic connection for the servo, and then we have the uh, children's safety switch right there that will stick out of the door. And then, of course, the latch for the door. And then over here is actually where the latch physically opens from the door handle itself on the outside of the car. There's a wishbone that comes over and so you don't have to attach anything in a sense, you just gotta make sure the wishbone is over this, which in a sense is an attachment, but it doesn't lock onto it or anything, it just goes on top of it and hangs there. This unit is installed with three screws, and then of course the two connections of the cable itself. The tools you will need for this is a Phillips, a prying tool, like specifically made for cars, and you could get that at a whole set of these at Harbor Freight for like five bucks. And then a Torx T30, which if you're not familiar with Torx, it's kind of a star pattern. So that shows you what Torx are. And certain clips you need to pry off, which uh, there's, there's some uh, V version of these that I'll show you later. And then I had to actually use a channel locks to pop mine off. All right, let's get to it.
The other thing I wanted to show you is, is you know, here's, here's the latch in the door. When it's in the door, at least this is for the rear door, um, there's like a wishbone that actually goes across this. And so as you see me putting this, installing it in the car, you can see that I'm kind of doing this kind of motion to get that wishbone not over here, but across this thing. So you don't have to actually, you know, tie it in anything. It just needs to be on top of this. Um, I think for the front doors, there's an actual piece down here that you actually have to get the uh, wire into that area. Um, the other thing is, is make sure that when you install this, this is moving freely. Mine was not moving freely, so I had to back it out, use a screwdriver, which you could use to uh, move that, get that going freely, and then I leave it in that position because I don't have any kids. And then I popped it back in there and, and now it's moving freely, it's okay. Um, with all these connectors, you just press down on the connector and then it will come out. And it's a little hard to see, but you just have to uh, press, press down and then pull out. I couldn't figure out for a while and then finally I saw that you could just press that little, little tab right there, it goes up and down. So that makes it really easy after that. Also, there's a little opening in the bottom of the door that allows you to get in. So there's an opening right here. It allows you to get in and get your fork over the first um, pin to pop it open. So, you know, using a tool like this is a really good way of doing it. Once you get one started, then you could kind of swing around and get the next one started. And then from there, you just need to pull. So it works out pretty well. So this bracket here, which is actually holding your window. In the case of the rear door, I don't think you have to actually loosen this. Um, and you might have some issues with the window coming down afterwards. There's not much movement here, but there's definitely a good millimeter or something that you could move this, as long as the window's not binding on the way down. I know for the front, you might have to actually remove this to get it out of the way, but I was able to swing the unit back around. I don't know if you noticed in the camera, but I came from here and I swung the unit back around and then wrapped the cables around this without moving it. Because once you loosen these, this doesn't really move much at all. Like you can't swing it out of the way. So it's kind of there anyway. So why bother even screwing up your alignment? Just swing the other unit out and come back around. So I wanted to give you a view of what's going on. There's these clips that are embedded into this weather stripping on the door. Now, on the front door, I believe you would actually remove this, install the weather stripping on the car, and then pop the uh, door back onto it, the uh, door panel back onto it. In this case, I think I could just leave these attached and actually push the door back on, um, but we'll see how that goes. And then over here, this is how your cables are attached to the door handle. They're actually... Uh, grabbed right here and then the cable goes into these mechanisms here and you can see that there's a slot so you can get it out so what happens is you release the cable from the plastic bring it up then the balls will come out and you can release it and then when you go to replace it you stick it in there stick it in and then snap in and that's how they stay in so i couldn't get the door on without taking these clips off and the way i finally got it was to get a big tool like this and then pry up uh, you need some substantial force to get them out. But this one's by itself without the weather stripping on it, so at least you could practice on that one. Um, but like this side is uh, sealed in, so you can only come from this side. That one you can only come from that side, so.
So with the 2014 GX460, I'm actually able to program some of the functionality of my door locks. Now with older vehicles, which I've had older Lexuses and stuff like that before, you have to actually take it to the dealer and ask them to program it. But in this case, you could actually come to the vehicle, vehicle customization, door lock settings. And as you can see, there's all sorts of different things like auto lock by speed, auto lock by shift from park, unlock by shift to park, unlock by driver door, remote press, select doors to unlock, access system with electric key, auto relock timer, lock unlock feedback lights, lock unlock feedback tone. Because my rear door wasn't actually working and it was working some of the times, I turned off some of these things because I wanted to make sure that when I was unlocking the vehicle and getting in and out that it was only doing the driver's side. And that way I was safe and the car was protected and I just, you know, didn't hit the, the lock and then walk away from the vehicle not knowing that the back door wasn't locked. But now that I have the actuator installed in the vehicle and it's working, I put everything back to the settings which you see here, which is my preferred settings, and we're ready to rock. Well, that's it for the Lexus GX460 door actuator video. Remember, we do have playlists that involve the GX460, the 2003 anniversary Corvette, the factory 533 hot rod, and the LS engine build. So until next time, have a great day.